In this video, we're going to solve rational equations. In order to do this, we go through a four-step process. The first thing that we want to do is to factor out the denominators of all of the fractions in our equation. Second, we want to multiply each term by the least common denominator that we find from factoring. Third thing we want to do is solve the equation just using standard algebra. And then the fourth thing, once we get our solutions, we want to make sure there's no extraneous solutions that cause the denominator to go to zero. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do is factor our denominators. So I see a 24 here. I know that 24 is 3 times 8. And I know that 8 is 2 cubed. So my factored denominator here is 2 cubed 8, or 2 cubed times 3. 3 minus x, this uh, entire subtracted term here is just going to stay as is, can't be factored any further. And 4 is 2 squared, so we can factor that 2 squared. Looking at this, we're trying to identify where is our common denominator, our least common denominator. So we have a 3 in the denominator, we have a 2 to some power, comes up a couple times. And we have this 3 minus x term. So taking the highest power of each of these, we're going to have a 3 to the first, 2 to the third power, because third power is the highest one available, and a 3 minus x. So we'll take that right there. Next thing we do is we take our original equation and we multiply everything by the least common denominator. What this will do for us is it will eliminate all of the fractions. Once we eliminate all the fractions, the whole problem becomes much easier to solve. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to write it over 1, just because when we multiply fractions, it's easier to see it written over 1. So 3 times 2 to the third times quantity 3 minus x. The whole thing going to be multiplied by this term, this term, and this term. Because remember, whenever we're modifying an equation, we have to do the same thing to both sides, or the same thing to all terms in order to make sure that everything remains equal and in balance. When we do that, though, we get to eliminate some of the terms that are in our equation here. So let's go ahead and see what those are. We have a 2 to the third power down here and up on top, so those cancel out. We have a 3 and a 3, so those cancel out. Um, this equation here, a 3 minus x and a 3 minus x can cancel each other out. And we have a 2 squared and a 2 cubed. So we'll just, there's one more 2 in the numerator than there is in the denominator. So I'm just actually going to cross out that exponent and it's just going to be 2 to the 1 left over. And nothing else cancels here. So as you see, nothing left in our denominators except 1's. And of course, that could be there in any denominator. So we've eliminated the denominators. Next step is to actually multiply out what we still have left. So let's go ahead and do that. We have our 5 times the leftover 3 minus x, plus we have 2 times our 2 to the third, which is, of course, 8, times our 3 times, well, the 3 minus x went away, so that we're done with that one. This all over on this side is going to be equal to, on the other side we have 2, times 3, which is 6, times the quantity 3 minus x. Now we just continue to do the algebra. We know 5 times the quantity is going to be 15 minus 5x. So we have that. 2 times 8 times 3, that simplifies down to 48. And then on the other side, we distribute our 6 to both terms. So 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times negative x is negative 6x. Continue along that path. Let's go ahead and add 6x to both sides, which effectively moves us over to the other side. So combine our like terms by adding 6x to both sides. We're going to be left with just an x on the left. Skipping ahead a little bit on you. Uh, and then on the other side, we're going to be subtracting 
15 from both sides, subtracting 48 from both sides. And so I'll just show you the additional steps here. You combined your like terms here. But when we do that, we're going to be subtracting that, and we're going to end up with x equals negative 45. Once we get our value of x here, we have negative 45. We need to make sure in our last step that it doesn't cause any denominators to go to 0. So let's look back up top. And if we put a negative 45 in for x, that would cause this denominator to go to a positive 48. So that's not going to go to 0. So that's not a problem, and nothing else puts it to 0. So we can conclude that it doesn't cause the denominator to go to 0, and therefore is a solution. So our answer of x equals negative 45 is our final answer. In this next problem here, uh, we follow the same four steps. So, let's look at our first one. What can we do to factor our first denominator of p plus 1? Well, there's really nothing we can do. It's as simplified as it's going to get. So we'll leave that term by itself. On the other side, we have p squared minus 1. And since that's a difference of squares, it factors into p plus 1 and p minus 1. And then, of course, our p on the outside, nothing changes there. So I have a factor of p plus 1, I'll highlight that here, which also comes up again on the other side, and a p minus 1. So our least common denominator is going to have to have both of those represented. Highest power of each group is the first power, so we will simply have p minus 1 times p plus 1 as our least common denominator. Next step is we take that and we multiply it by every term in the equation. So our first term here, we have p squared minus p plus 1, all times that least common denominator. And of course, that's over p plus 1. Second term, p squared minus 7 over p minus 1 times p plus 1 times p plus 1 times p minus 1 in our new numerator here that we added. And the p term on the end, same thing, multiply it by our least common denominator. Now we get to the fun step of canceling things out. So I see a p plus 1 down here and a p plus 1 up here. Don't confuse it with this p plus 1 as part of this larger quantity here. I'm going to throw some parentheses around just to make sure that we don't get confused with that. Remember, anything that's being added and subtracted cannot be canceled out. You can only do that with terms that are grouped together and being multiplied times the other groups, like this p plus 1 was one group together, and we cancel out the whole group with a p plus 1. This grouping here, you can't, you can't cancel out part of a group. Continuing on, we have a p minus 1 and a p minus 1 in this set of multiplied fractions. p plus 1, p plus 1, so that cancels out very nicely. And on this one, we have nothing to cancel out because we only have 1 in our denominator. So once again, just like last time, all of our denominators are completely gone, leaving us with one large numerator. So let's see what we have. We have this quantity, p squared minus p plus 1, all times p minus 1. It's going to be equal to p squared minus 7. And that's not multiplied by anything here because that all canceled out. Plus p times the quantity p plus 1, p minus 1. So now, once we have this, we need to multiply it out and simplify to try to solve for p. On this side, it's a little bit of ugly distribution, because what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take each of these terms here and multiply it by p. And you're also going to have to do the same thing and multiply all of them by negative 1. Because remember, everything here has to distribute across. So let's do that. p times p squared is going to be p cubed minus p times p is going to be p squared plus p times 1 is going to be p. Negative 1 times p squared is going to be minus p squared. Negative 1 times negative p is going to be plus p. And negative 1 times positive 1 is going to be negative 1. So that takes care of this whole side. On the right side of the equal sign, we're going to have 
simply p squared minus 7 because there's nothing being multiplied by this term, so there's no distribution required. You just drop the parentheses. And finally, we have p times p plus 1 times p minus 1. And if we want to multiply that out, what I would recommend doing, I'm actually going to foil this for you real quick. p plus 1 times p minus 1, since it's a difference of squares, is going to go to p squared minus 1. And then you take that quantity and multiply it by p. I'm just going to cross that out just so we have something simpler to look at. So p times p squared is p cubed. p times negative 1 is negative p. Now, once again, if we want to simplify this, let's see if anything cancels out on both sides of the equation. Have a p cubed on both sides, that cancels out. That's nice, so that simplifies things a little bit, takes out one of the powers. And then it's just a lot of garbage collecting. We have negative p squared and negative p squared. I'll highlight these in the same color so they're easier to see. Our like terms. Those are all our p to the second powers. p to the first power here. And the negative 1 on the other side. And our constants. We have a negative 1 and a negative 7. So once we go through the process of collecting those all together and setting them on the same side of the equal sign, we're going to get 0 because I want to shove everything to the right side here. If we have a negative 2p squared on this side and we add it to this side, we'll end up with 3p squared. If we look at our p's, I have 2p over here and a negative p, so if I subtract the 2p from the negative p, I'll have negative 3p. And then I have a negative 1, so if I add 1 to both sides, then I'm going to end up with a negative 6 over here. You're starting to think, well, geez, this is starting to look quadratic. Maybe that's a good way to solve it. And in fact, it will be. So let's go ahead and work this out. If we factor out the 3 from each of these terms, we're left with p squared minus p minus 2. And now, what in order to factor that any farther, in order to get closer to our solution through factoring, we just need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to negative 1. Well, we know that negative 2 and positive 1 will do that. So if you do p minus 2 times p plus 1, negative 2 times 1 is going to get us our negative 2 back. Negative 2, positive 1 adds up to negative 1 here. So this is going to work for us. And we, of course, keep our 3 out front. And now, since it's set equal to 0, and we're trying to solve it, because we want to find what is the value of p, we want to solve for p, we can say we have two solutions. p equals 2 will work to solve this, and p equals negative 1. Last step is making sure that these solutions actually work. So let's take a look at our p equals 2 and go back up to the top. p equals 2, I'm going to have 3 in the denominator, or... 2 squared is 4 minus 1, 3 in the denominator. Not a problem. Negative 1 now. Negative 1 plus 1, well, that's not going to work. So already we lost. And then this side, if you take negative 1 squared minus 1, again, you would lose. So in both two of the th three terms here, we're going to have zeros in the denominator. So that's a problem. So we're going to have to throw out that negative 1. So therefore, p equals 2 is the only answer that you would solve, use for this equation. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that. I'm going to cross out that extraneous solution because it does not work. All right, last example here. Same four steps. Let's go ahead and start by factoring this out. 1 over x minus 2 doesn't factor, so we'll just leave it as is. We have an x squared plus 2x minus 8. Two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to a positive 2. I will want to say that positive 4 and negative 2 will do that. Let's take a look. They multiply to negative 8 and they do add positive 2. So we can get an x plus 4 and an x minus 2 in our denominator here. Finally, on the right, we have an x plus 4. Just leave that as is because that can't be factored any further. If we look at our common terms, we have an x minus 2. That comes up a couple times, and an x plus 4 that comes up a couple times. 
So our least common denominator is going to have an x minus 2 term, all to the first power, and an x plus 4 term, all to the fourth power, because that's the highest power that we see of either of them. Let's go ahead and multiply every term in our equation by our least common denominator. That's our second step that we're doing now. So we have our 1 over x minus 2 multiplied by our least common denominator. We have 2x plus 1 over x plus 4 quantity times x minus 2 multiplied by our LCD. And finally, 2 over x plus 4 times our LCD. Get to our fun canceling step here, and we can simplify this thing quite a bit. Cross out an x minus 2 in top and bottom. Cross out an x plus 4 in top and bottom, and another x minus 2 here. And cross out an x plus 4 and an x plus 4. And so now we've simplified this quite a bit. And on this side, we simply have 1 times x plus 4, so just x plus 4, equals, because this is that finishes the whole side already, 2x plus 1 multiplied by nothing, so we'll just leave it as 2x plus 1, plus we have 2 here times the quantity x minus 2. Leave that all here. We need to go ahead and do some distribution on this side. And so we will distribute that too. Now we're collecting our like terms. So let's see what we have. We have our x's here and our constants. Let's see how that boils down. On the left side, we have an x plus 4, 4x minus 3, because we collected our like terms on the same side. And then we get all of these terms to be on the same side. So on this side, we'll put our constants, add 3 to both sides. On the other side, our x's, we'll subtract 1x from both sides to get 3x. And then in the final step, of course, we divide both sides by 3, so we get x alone leaving us with x equals 7 thirds. Our last step is to go ahead and check this in our original equation and make sure it doesn't blow up the denominator. 7 thirds, 7 thirds plugged into this equation here. 7 thirds minus 2 is not going to be 0. 7 thirds plus 4 is not going to be 0. And you could plug it into this equation, but I find it easier just to plug it into the factored form because these two are equivalent. 7 thirds plugged into either of these terms, neither of them will go to 0, because the only thing that could make it go to 0 is a negative 4 or a positive 2. Therefore, this solution is in fact our final solution. Now I'm going to circle it, and we're going to call it a day.